This is Gail with Bernina of Naperville, and guess what? I am not in Bernina of Naperville right now. I am in a great, amazing workshop that I can't wait for you to see, and we're going to get a tour. But first, you need to learn who the brains behind this operation is, and it is Courtney and Dana, and they are known as the Egg Sisters. So um, I guess the first thing we should really do is get to know you and why you do these amazing things. So um, just speak up either one when I start asking you questions and, you know, I, I okay. I'm really <laughs> nervous right now because I am such a fan of, of these two and I, I will say this. So I met Courtney and Dana uh, probably in January or December, yeah. something like that, when they picked up this little guy, they're putting in a 435, but what they really don't know is that I have been a super fan of theirs, following them on social media, watching their tutorials, and, and yeah, so, you guys are cosplayers, and, but you're more than that, because you're true artists, so tell me a little bit about, number one, how this came to be. <laughs> like, I guess, let's see, uh, growing up, we always liked um, being creative, like we did stop motion animation in our basement, and um, you know, we always did art school, or, or like uh, art club, and uh, we like dress up, um, so back then we just got thrift store clothes and we liked to pretend and play, and that was a lot of fun, um, and then as we got a little older, we started getting to Halloween and making those costumes, and a lot of our cosplay started with um, anime conventions and just buying stuff from thrift stores or Halloween stores and modifying it, which I think is a great place to start for anyone. Um, it's nice to have a base, you know, like if you want to be make a skull arm or something, um, just get some some bone and then you can paint it up and weather it and things and versus making it from scratch, it's kind of nice to have a base to begin from. Um, and then we just started finding all the tutorials online, uh, there's a, you know, the internet gave us access to a lot of information than before when we were younger. Um, and so we just learned a lot. And I think not until like 2014 um, did we really deep dive into the education online that we could find from the community. And we learned about Warbla and thermoplastics and EVA foam. And so all these new materials came available to us. And then, um, I think as kids, we always thought it was so cool, and I'm sorry, I'm just going no, with this. No. <laughs> uh, we, uh, we always thought, like, as a kid, like, we would never be able to make monster suits and all the cool stuff that they did on, with special effects on, on those movies, like in Jurassic Park and the raptor suits, and we're like, man, what are our dreams? Goodbye, it's an impossible dream. Um, and then we found people that kind of got us introduced to how to make this stuff, and we found information online, and we found how to get the materials to do these things and learn that we can do them at home. <laughs> it is actually possible, but it's a lot of trial and error. It's very hard. Um, it's expensive materials, uh, but it's awesome and it's doable. And so I think cosplay to us is just kind of like our childhood dream of making these creature suits um, and kind of like hiding the human form and becoming something inhuman like they do in the movies. And it's just really fun. And first of all, you said you can do it at home, and we are actually not just in a monster studio, <laughs> but Courtney lives in this realm. Yeah, so you ever wake up and like in the middle of the night to get like a cookie, and you're like, whoa, yeah. my serpent is scaring me? <laughs> I was talking to Dana about that last night, just sitting here, and I'm like, you know, I kind of take for granted that I have this giant robot in my living room, uh, and all these strange things around me, but I think... It almost feels like, you know, the Little Mermaid in her cave of wonders. <laughs> <laughs> There's all my favorite things surrounding me, and it's just kind of like, you know, my, my woman cave. I like it. Excellent. So you bust into song. Yes. This is the stuff. <laughs> 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 yeah. So, uh, Dana, so, this, so you guys collaborate here most of the time, or, or do you have, like, a um, other monster shop where you live, or...? Um, I have a very small space at my house that I will take homework. Like, I come here on the weekends and we do all the big stuff here, but I'll take little projects home to work on. But this is the main area. Okay. There's a lot of stuff, yeah. All right. I like how you call it homework. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Marching orders. And... So, uh, what 
so a lot of the stuff that you're talking about, some of our audience is going to know exactly what you're talking about, but others will not. Like when we talk about war blood, EVA foam, and all of that stuff, um, when we go on a tour, let's, if you could just, you know, kind of tell us, like, this is EVA foam, and it's a thin foam that you use to, like, make armor so it looks like metal, but so that you can wear it so you don't fall over. Is that like a good yeah, it's like, like, it's okay. damage to, you know, if you take a beating, you know, okay. like people in crowded areas or, um, you know, it's a good base for that. And how long do you, like, from start to finish on a project like, um, let's, let's take the robot in the kitchen here, or dining or <laughs> living room, it's both. The, um, the robot took you how long? Three you know? months. Three months? But it was... That was a hell of a was hell of a Okay. <laughs> now, when you made that, did you have like a deadline in mind? So, yeah, that was our first Dragon Con and the only Dragon Con that we've ever gone to. Mm -hmm. And we were killing ourselves to try and get ready for that. Okay. And they drove it there. Yeah, it was <laughs> kind of like we couldn't think of what we wanted to make. And then all of a sudden, you know, Overwatch, that's the game it, it's from, came out. And Courtney liked that character and that's, uh, that skin, that armor. We're like, why don't we try? <laughs> That's and That's and for, so for those of you that don't know, so Dragon Con is a huge convention that's held every year around Labor Day weekend in Atlanta, Georgia. And it's not just like a convention like you might see at McCormick Place near us where, where we are here, where it's one place. Dragon Con is like five hotels. You need a roadmap to know where to do anything. There are different tracks. There's costuming, comic book what have you, and it is just huge. So, it is not an easy thing to get around there in a giant costume, so. No, we actually could never fit on the elevators, and it was just us, and we had to take it up three or, oh, I don't know. We were on the sixth floor, six and we had to go up the, the stairs, all the parts, and some nice people were willing to just like, can I take something for you? Here, here <laughs> And keep in mind, this is summer in Atlanta. Yeah. So, like 90 degrees. So when I talk about like walking through Centennial Park in my uh, Sarah costume, that's nothing compared to being a robot in Atlanta. It we it was yeah. kept him inside. It was okay. It was crazy. Yeah, yeah for sure. But yeah, I, we have worn that thing outside for a photo shoot, and it's it's oppressive in there. Well, the very first time Courtney put it on, it's a party for us. yeah, we were still finishing it on the way to Georgia. We drove. They rented a minivan and we we're still painting and doing stuff. So the first time she put it on, we were meeting up with our friend for a photo shoot in a parking garage. And it was hot and things weren't working. <laughs> it was awful, but then we went back to the room and made some tweaks and were able to debut it. And she was able to wear it for a period of time in the hotel lobby. So it all worked awesome. out. But yeah, a big suit like that, which again, it's the first only one we've ever done. Um, there's a learning curve on just wearing it um because like anything i i'm inside here and i'm going like this and outside it looks like this <laughs> so like everything you do you have to triple exaggerate it so anyone can see the movement um, so by the end of it like by the fourth time i wore it i think we were dancing on stage i flew the shoulder off <laughs> you're dancing on mr robot <laughs> yeah so they didn't tell, funny story they didn't tell me this we were on stage um at a con and uh they, Dana and her husband had told the DJ to play Mr. Roboto and have her dance to it. And someone just runs up to me along the suit and just says, Hey, they're gonna play Mr. Roboto, just go dance to it. And I'm like, What? <laughs> and so they just shoot me out on the stage. That's all these long. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm like, I can do like three moves. I got three. I got three that I can do over and over again. The song keeps going. And so then I have to do, you know, the turn around and you have to shake your butt. And that everyone like, that's 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 that So. And, you know, it feels like forever when you're up there. I did the Legend of the Chosen, which they hold at the Georgia Aquarium, mm -hmm. and I had to go out there while, like, Napoleon Dynamite is describing my costume, <laughs> whatever, and I'm just like, I don't know what Sarah would do in this environment. So I'm just like, hee, <laughs> 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 hee, I totally get it. Dance yeah. for the audience. Exactly. So there's a lot of stuff back here behind you guys. And I'm going to talk about what Dana's holding back there in just a minute. But that, you know, oh, my God. OK, <laughs> so there's there's lots of stuff in these. And this literally looks like some kind of weird 
gooey organs. And uh, so this costume, now I'm not going to, you're going to be, be like, it's a la 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 la. And I'm not going to know what you're talking you're right, about. It is a la 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 la. <laughs> oh my God, it's uh, my keen sense. Okay, so what is this costume? Um, it's a necromancer from Diablo. Um, it's like a. It's a necromancer. It's a necromancer, you know. So, so with that in mind, so your costumes also that you're building, because the um, Chicago Tribune did a great article about you guys when we were all together at C2E2, um, which is Comic Convention Entertainment Expo. Uh, you would like to make costumes that people wouldn't necessarily have already seen. Yeah, we like to make stuff that um, doesn't exist in the real world, so that's why we're fond of doing video game characters. Um, it's not something like, like in the movies, you know, we've, it's already been made really well by professionals. So it's kind of fun to take something like a video game character, which is often difficult because they don't have to adhere to gravity and other <laughs> worldly things. Um, so there's often a lot of challenges on making these things that couldn't possibly exist in the real world. Okay. Um, for example, this, so uh, we also take our own spin on a lot of the costumes. We never really do it um, exactly to the T what the character looks like in the game. Uh, just because it's an opportunity to be creative and, and try something more fun. Um, so for this one, I think it was, we wanted it to look like it was pulsing with blood. So we went an extra mile and we made all of that out of um, transparent resin, which is some light airbrushing, transparent paints over the top. So actually all of it lights up and those hearts are made of silicone and they've got servos in them that rotate. And so it actually has a beating uh, animation to it. Oh, it's really gross. So you did a good job. <laughs> yeah. You know? So when you said it looked really fleshy, we were, I, I'm, I was very moved and I thought that's what I achieved what I wanted to really have achieved what I wanted. And so this is, this is a corset and it looks like there's probably something else that attaches to this. That corset has so many straps and pieces of velcro on that thing. It okay. is just, it is a house for so many things to be attached to Dan's okay. body. Okay. All right. That's cool. But and yeah. you know, you, you have great documentation of all of your costumes costumes on your website and we do have a link on our uh on our website as well and in our video description we'll link to you guys but uh so if you're watching and you want to see like what this really looks like all finished and suited up it's it's great so you just go under work at eggsisters.com yeah and then we list all the materials and we try to link where you can buy them too so and some you have tutorials as well some of them yeah okay. and we we could probably do a lot more that's our goal to make more tutorials as you are as well yeah you know, getting all those youtube videos out mm -hmm. um but there's at least you can get started if you have Want to try and and here's our friend. I feel like I'm very well acquainted with our <laughs> troll wig. Yes. So uh, Dana wore this, or we actually housed this at our booth at C2E2 this year. Um, and this is a troll from World of Warcraft. And, uh, you know, so the wig is, you know, designed. And, and then uh, Dana gets painted like body paint and face paint. And she wears a prosthetic. And I'm digging down here because I recognize it. See, I told you I'm, I'm up close. And here, so, so Dana puts this on her beautiful face so she can be not as beautiful, but that's, that's the goal. And, um, and, and she's, oh no, this is a different one, isn't it? Yeah, that's the undead, the troll foreheads. Right okay, here. okay, yeah. all right, sorry, sorry, sorry. Justice too. Furrowed brow, that's what we're <laughs> looking for here. And uh, so this gets attached to her forehead and then her skin becomes, this is one of my favorite colors, this teal color, <laughs> but um, you know, Troll. she gets all transformed. And then the actual outfit is her outfit. I sound like your yes. mom has come to visit you. <laughs> you can say outfit or costume. But her nice little outfit and necklace and bikini and all of this now, Sash. We we looked at this, you know, we, we didn't get this on video, but look at this hand beating. And this was like, oh yeah, we needed to try hand beating, so you know. <laughs> and feet, look, just feet. I love it. Oh my god, I, I you're gonna have to drag me out of here because this is really inspiring. And so then this is a work in progress. I'm sorry, I didn't. <laughs> So this is, and so they cast this. I'm going to grab the cast because I saw it. Just be careful. It's fine. We're not going to you cut your hand on the side. Oh, okay. All right. So this is the cast here. So, you know, obviously like anything else, you get to, you strap it together. You pour the yeah, dragon skin. Is that what's in there? Yeah. 
so it's got a core inside. So what they've made this um, this lovely lady out of is um, oh, that, that's ooh, a ah, okay, <laughs> called dragon skin, and dragon skin is silicone based, and you can um, just get the silicone, and then you can add other agents into it to make it different colors. But then you can also paint it and do things like that to it as well. So it looks like they made a cast of Dana, and and then she gets put in here. Then they pour the stuff in, and then boom, a, a lady with lots of arms comes out. Is yes. that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So that makes a nice hole for a body. I love it. And then what is the cast made of? That's fiberglass. Okay. All right. And then I I mean I did how could I not even notice this green thing under her? <laughs> it's a work in progress. It's not so it's the normal snake lady, it's a lady with three. Tentacles. Yeah, we're so gonna, we're going to hide the, the shoes in here. Okay. So we wanted to actually have a three tentacle lower body um, and hide the legs as best we can and, and hide the feet. So and make it look like it's. Moving and this it still needs to be painted. Yeah, Correct. it's still just um, right just carving it out of uh, foam, a ball street foam, mm -hmm. and then we're going to uh, paint latex over it and then build it up the texture some more, and then we'll paint it with latex paint. That's the idea, at least. Right. <laughs> and do you have a timeline for this? No, um, it's kind of, it was going to be for uh, BlizzCon last year, but we were able to finish it for that. So it's kind of, we're going to just chip away at it and not stress too much. You've got it. time because the cons are all like yeah. on mold. Yeah. So, you know, imagine all of the awesome things you're going to make now that you don't have like, Oh gosh, we gotta get it this is, going. Right? It is really nice, yeah. So Dana is holding my good friend, <laughs> Vicar Amelia. This is from Bloodborne, and Bloodborne is a video game. Yeah. And it's a creepy game. So this is like a giant wolfy like costume mm -hmm. that requires stilts. Yep. Correct? Yeah. And the thing of why I wanted her to show this to you is because this is kind of how we all met, we really met the Egg Sisters. Yeah, that's a beautiful start of the story. <laughs> so I, as you, yeah. <laughs> as you all know, I once worked at Bernina of America and I worked with sponsorships and uh, national promotions. And I was sitting, happened to be sitting in a meeting in one of the boardrooms where we were discussing the the ambassador program and a former or a person who used to work at Bernina every day and then moved away happens to be best friends with these egg sister ladies. <laughs> and so Jenny came in and she was like, Oh my God, my friends are at fantasy Basel right now. And they just met HP, HP, not Harry Potter, <laughs> Hans Peter Ulchi, who is the owner of Bernina and Courtney was in Vicar Amelia in her like stilts and her little furry, scary flipping costume. That's where she peeks out. <laughs> and, and so, and then that is when immediately the mood of this meeting changed to, well, why aren't we talking to Courtney and Dana? <laughs> and so now here they are on our fantabulous talk show. <laughs> Believe me, they we can learn a lot from them. I'm I'm really joking, but also very excited that that did happen know, because that's how we met. I'm very glad we met. You guys are awesome, and we love hanging out with you guys. Uh, it was great. I really enjoyed C2E2 this year. It was great. So we had a, a big booth at C2E2, and then on a 10-foot section, we had uh, Courtney and Dana's costume but then also they did a live makeup prosthetic makeup demo and then we, they're just like newspaper people coming in and out and everything and it was really a lot of fun and so it was a great experience for us as well especially being a new business and it was the last time I left Naperville because <laughs> now we're in the midst of this pandemic and yeah. we pretty much went from C2E2 60,000 people to shelter in place yeah. where Chris and I just look at each other all the time so yeah. that's crazy that's what happened there that, was, that might be the only con we have all year oh so we're yeah to have that yeah because Dragon Con is canceled this year mm -hmm. and and yeah so well you know 
I always try to make lemonade out of lemons. So hopefully it just helps us all be creative and we'll all just have to make costumes with fantabulous masks. Yeah. So <laughs> and we, we did shoot around the idea of doing a costume group with you guys someday. So if oh, you guys want to talk about that again. Do you hear this? It's <laughs> happening live on television. It's going to happen. Absolutely sure would love it. We have to think about what kind of group we'd like to make. Yeah. yeah. That would be really fun. Yeah, that awesome. would be totally cool. So then we talked a lot about this robot, and that is our... Or our. See, I'm now already. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's cool. So this is uh, what Courtney uh, wears and and does her um, Mr. Roboto in. So I'm sure if we Google that, we'll find it somewhere on the internet. And I forgot to turn all my lights on my armory wall. Oh, it's too late for that. So I recognize these. These are they go with the undead costume. Yeah. And then, what's this this stick? <laughs> it's a lightsaber. It's a lightsaber. Is that that's from Star Wars? Yeah, we okay. didn't make those. Those are just ones yeah. that we purchased. But it's ambient. It's, it's yeah. adding some a nice touch here. We made these guys though. Those were our first, I think, two part rows of molds. Yeah, that's really cool. And we also have some pictures of Dana in her undead. Costume, and I showed it to you earlier, but in case you need a reminder or you just wanted to have another look, <laughs> there you are. <laughs> this is me without my makeup in the morning. <laughs> the pieces, this, these are the epaulets or the shoulder pieces of the undead, right? Yep. And uh, here is a wall of just some um, other cosplayers we're friends with, and we got their, them to sign. A lot of people from Switzerland, we got posters from the collection obviously is not complete there's a lot of people we haven't gotten pictures of yet but it's yeah. nice to to have them and get inspired by all these awesome cast players yeah um so this is kind of like uh the storage room for our fabrics all our stuff that is kind of clean materials that we don't want to get dirty uh, electronics over there this is what we bring to cons for the costumes these are awesome kind of costly but like worth every penny. Like, these are so much easier to... We used to carry those, two of us at a time carrying them, or one of us holding it. It was very heavy. Um, so these are super, super nice for if you're looking for something to bring um, your costumes to when we have cons again. Bunch of stuff, a lot old costumes, the closet's filled with boxes of costumes, all of our makeup's in here. Oh, Are you, are you in dream? It is! This thing! <laughs> I should send you guys a picture of me in it. Um, so that was supposed to be, it was another very big, horrible, uncomfortable costume that we were planning on making, and we still may do so one day. But that's the body of, what are they called in WoW? It's a devil sword, devil sword. but it's like a big T-Rex. Yeah. So we wanted to do like a walking with dinosaur strike costume. Yeah. I guess we might be able to just prop it on you. Yeah. And so the hiking backpack, we built it around with aluminum to kind of mock it up. There's a head in there that's kind of mocked up, and it's supposed to have a bicycle handle, and the brakes would make the eyes blink and the mouth open. Where are the shoulder things? So maybe one day we'll get this done. Ugh. We were having issues fabricating the moving neck. Because yeah. we wanted it so to move up and down a bit. <laughs> With the two bike handles, so the mouth, like this would squeeze, would uh, blink the eyes, and this squeeze would open and close the mouth, um, and it would pivot from here, and so you'd have a full swivel on the neck, and then um, there'd be like a camera in the nose, so I could, I'd have a little LED screen in here. Wow. Ah, so one day, perhaps. It's pretty nice in here. It kind of feels like I'm like in a... If anything, you could be <laughs> like an airplane yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah I, I feel mean. like I'm in a little Star Wars ship right now. Oh my God. <laughs> I love it. But it's great to see, like, that this is a hiking backpack frame. Yeah. And, you know, like, what's actually under there. Yeah, we made it first with um, PVC pipe and, like, cardboard and stuff. And then when we were happy with those dimensions, we started moving to aluminum. So we had something sturdier. Ideally, welding it together, I think, would be the way to go. Um, we would need to learn how to weld. Yeah, that was, I mean, we considered it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just, it's expensive equipment. Yeah. So that would be, that would be a whole thing. So, all right, get me out of this thing. <laughs> Try not to cut yourself on it. But this a nice shot. Oops. Oh. Then you run out of spots to put all this stuff. It's, 
Can you believe this whole place was empty once? <laughs> It's amazing how things grow. I mean, like even at the store, like when we transformed and went from Unicorn Forest to something else. Like you do. The Unicorn Forest is in my garage. So yeah, it just doesn't disappear. Anyone yeah. wants to travel through Fantasyland. Uh, yeah, I'm still waiting for my invitation. Take me, take me away. When I, when I get the other stuff, because there's, there's Unicorn Forest, and now I think there's like my mom's old chair. I mean, like, you know. It's, I could have a mansion, it would be filled to the gills of weird stuff. Right? Yeah, yeah. If there's, a, if there's a room, we will fill it. <laughs> Just like if there's a tabletop, there will be stuff on it. Yes, right? yes. I don't know if it's still... Oh, it's kind of... Okay, but this is when we were trying to figure out how to do the the legs, the big foam tentacles. We were trying to figure out how Courtney would stand in it. So we were just kind of propping. And then originally it had the two side tentacles and they, her feet will attach to those so she can walk and they'll move with her. But just weird stuff, cool. always trying to just figure it out. Yeah. So. A lot of prototyping, it's worth, and as you said, the prototype becomes the finished piece. <laughs> right. Well, you know, I just saw a tutorial in, in the fashion world for taking miniature dress frames and practicing draping your, your big girl clothes. Oh, yeah. And so it's like, you know, kind of the same concept, but I was like, oh, I don't know. That seems like it would be harder than, because working in the miniature is, yeah. is a little bit harder. Yeah. But, you know, whatever you need to do, though, to get your brain around what mm -hmm. the shape would Sometimes be. Sometimes you just need to see it. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So do either of you draw? Yeah. Can you draw? We, we used to draw a lot in high school. Like yeah. yeah. Kinda... Dana's more of the fine artist, though. I think that's her uh, her niche is the sculpting and the painting and the drawing. She's very, very good at that stuff. Okay. And then, so drawing, painting, and sculpting. And then you are fabrication? or I just fill in. I'm like the cock. I just fill in <laughs> where there's a hole. Uh, I, I just no. like learn new things. I like to do the electronic stuff. Um, I do like sculpting and painting. She uh, does all the makeup. Okay. I've learned a lot from Dana. I think my sculpting's got a long way to go compared to her skill level, but I've learned a lot from her. Um, so it's really awesome having a sister that's good at this stuff. Who's older? Yeah. Who's older? She's older. She is? How, how, what is the age difference? You have to tell me your ages. I don't care. I'm 37. Okay. I'm okay. freshly 30. 35. Yeah. Oh, little babies. I remember <laughs> when I was 37. <laughs> 35. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Living in Vermont, brand new Bernina dealer. Oh, God. First time around. <laughs> anyway, awesome. I did not. I, I mean, cosplay was not in the vocabulary then. We, it was Renaissance Fair and Civil War reenactment, and well, in New England, Revolutionary War reenactment. But we were talking about since we have free time, uh, kind of working on our Ren Fair costumes since there's no Ren Fair this year. Yes, yeah. all go to Ren Fair. It would be super fun. Well, I've always wanted like some really decadent, like Elizabethan costume because I always make like the peasant garb, and I'm like. <laughs> No, something, th I just want to make a rough. Okay. That's, that's, that's about okay. It, you know? And yeah. that's an excuse to do it. That's, yeah. you know, or that's what cons are. You know, you have like to make these things. The Farthingale rough. Well, you, want, you want to be miserable at the con. Exactly. You know, okay. and or hopefully somewhere there is a Ren fair in the Antarctic <laughs> because that is what it would need to be to not sweat to death in it. Yeah. Right? Well, the, the big enough skirt you have built in social distance. Exactly. But well, there is a lady. There's a lady I saw on the on on social media. I don't know which thing, but they built paniers that were six feet. I, think I saw it. So that she could, could be in the grocery store. It was kind of funny. <laughs> and then, of course, I never saved these things, so I can't like really talk about them. And then you flash up the picture like we do with our fancy editing. But nonetheless, if I see it, I'll send it your way. Exactly. Yeah. All right, so there's another room yep. here, but wait, hey, there's more. Exactly. So let's. So now we are in the. This is the the clean room. The clean room. So now we're gonna go to the dirty room. <laughs> I love it. Let's go to the dirty room. <laughs> By dirty room, we don't mean naughty room. We mean actually, this is where your, your hands get dirty. And so I see you've got a paint booth behind you. There's some kind of rib cage thing there. Why don't you tell us about this? Like you were telling me about this a little earlier, or somebody, was it Courtney, or was it? Yeah, this is actually the mold for the piece that you're looking at, the red necromancer. This is the mold for the uh, rib cage. 
So, so that's the thing that wears its heart on its shoulder. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so we sculpted that in clay and then we um, molded it with this brushable silicone rubber. And then we made a shell over that with, it's called plastic paste. I don't, it's like a plastic okay. to make the shell so it holds its shape. So when we want to cast another one, we bolt together the front there. Do you see that? Yeah. It's pretty heavy. <laughs> bolt it together and then we just pour the resin in here and then Courtney does it because she's got the guns. You just rotate it around and spread the layer of resin in there. And you do it a couple times to build it up as thick as you need. And then you take it up and you have a hard rib cage. That's amazing. I recognize some of your stuff in here. like. You know, I, not that this is about me, but I'm trying to relate to people who have seen some of the things that I've made, which is like, you know, a stick figure versus an actual nice drawing. But some of this um, smooth on product, so I use the smooth on dragon skin to make those Lilu Dallas silicone oh, yeah. suspenders. Yeah. Oh my God, and I made a mold, but I didn't make a mold out of fancy things. I made a mold out of a countertop board, extra at Home Depot, mm -hmm. then applied with some kind of weird MDF, and then and then took my pattern piece, cut it, then took circular PVC pipe, glued everything down on that countertop, poured the mold. Yeah. So yeah, that's awesome. No, Did not use a releasing agent. Oh. No. So the mold was broken. So only one pair of suspenders was was made, mm -hmm. but that's okay. But nonetheless, so that's the kind of stuff that you get for that. So the silicone comes kind of like clear-ish and then you add pigment to it. Some of it. Yeah, there's so many different kinds, there's so many different things. And there's, like you described, there's a million different ways to do it. You don't always have to go the full professional, like extra hard, expensive way. Um, it depends on like if you want to make a bunch of them. You know, yeah. Like, you know, if, to, yeah, you don't need to mass produce, you don't need to make. My concept was, this is very expensive. I might just won't make a few in the mold while yeah. I'm doing it, but alas, it's fine because <laughs> it probably would have never made two or three anyway. We have all fallen victim to not putting that, that uh, okay. mold release in there. Everyone's yeah. been burned by I that for sure. When we were making those daggers, yep. we poured it in and realized we didn't put the release in, so we dumped everything out really quick and wiped it down. <laughs> like <a> paper towels, <laughs> yeah. all the cracks, and yeah. salvaged it. So yeah, there's definitely been some panic, panic oh shit moments. And, and not only would this make the costumes though, this is actually cool if you are like uh, making props or even making some, uh, you know, little tchotchkes to sell as, as a crafter at a craft fair because the silicone can be used to make like uh, ice cube trays. Mm -hmm. And I know that I had a friend that used it to make uh, ice cube trays that were shaped like shot glasses, <laughs> you know, so different things like that. So, you know, for those that might be watching that are not going to make a costume or a prop, some of this stuff can be used for lots of different things, making yeah. a button or I don't know. I mean, yeah, if there's like a piece of the costume and you can't find something already made, you can make it yeah. pretty easily and then it's very unique to you. Do you guys ever use 3D printers or anything like that? Eh, no, it's on the list. It's something we'd like to learn. Yeah. We're just, we've, we're just sticking with the old school stuff at the moment, but we'd like to learn. Them. I will tell you, they're really cool, but I almost think it's a trade-off, you know? I, I think that by the time you put something into ours and it's done, you almost could have fabricated something. I don't know. But it's good for mass production. Yeah, there's, there's, there's a tool for every job yeah. you now. So I think sometimes 3D printing would have really helped us out. Um, and sometimes we could ask a friend to print it for us. Yeah. So there's lots of problems with, with fixing up the 3D model so they print correctly. And there's lots of problems with the 3D printers acting up. But sometimes I think uh, having a really hard quick part, you know, to like make like something connect the way you want it to connect or like have a hinge that you need to hinge, like a lot of mechanical under the under the hood stuff, I feel like a 3D printer would be really great. Yeah. Place. It's been not I guess where I my expectations before I learned more about them is that I expected it to be more refined than it yeah. is. So but you know there's so many different things out there. I mean even obviously in the sewing machine world we we do that. So your sewing project. So here we are, Bernina Vaporville, <laughs> sewing store. You can tell that I have other interests though, other than the stuff that's sewn. So who does the sewing of the two? All right, so Courtney, <laughs> so resident seamstress. So what are you sewing with your costumes? 
Oh my gosh. Okay, so. Is there anything that you can show us out there? Maybe we retire to another spot? Yeah, that, that would be, we could probably pull some stuff out of the clean room. That would be where the sewing stuff okay. is. Um, the troll? Yeah, the troll too. Um, I think, you know, on one side of the coin, uh, there's a, you can't really make a cosplay. It's very, very unlikely you'll make a cosplay without some sort of sewing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you always need like, some spandex pants to start from. Always spandex. Some sort of base to put everything on. You need to be able to sew your own straps. We back, I think our first costumes, we glued pleather over foam and hand stitched it because we couldn't sew yet. And that thing immediately fell apart as soon as you put it on. It just rips apart. <laughs> so um, it's just like, there's so many things uh, that you need like under the hood to like start from and hold the piece together. Um, and then of course, as you, as I, been trying to improve my skills, then it becomes like sewing to actually show off a sewn piece on the outside that's not just being hidden by something else. Um, so we may have some, we're starting to dabble in more of that, like making like a jacket or something that, you know, you're actually like, not afraid to show someone my sewing skills. <laughs> so. But you know, I have, I also have to put it into perspective too. It's like, it's, you hit the nail on the head when you said there's always going to be the need for a sewn element. Yeah. And honestly, not everybody who sews needs to have like a piece that's all sewn that's like a showstopper. Mm -hmm. You know, but it's all part of the making process and, and you know, making something like that, you know, come to life. and. You know, just, I, I, I had dabbled with molds, but you know, I am gonna be the one that makes everything sewn and might have to do one little thing on yeah. like a mold or whatever, but it's- But they're all important and they're yeah. all crossover and you know, to achieve the fashions you wanna make, it's good to kind of be able to do all of it, at least try a little bit. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's look at the troll uh, costume again, because we know it's right out there. It's on the dress form. It's the only like non joint fabrics fabric place we know to go to, but we went digging deep in the musty basement of that place to find this kind of interesting um, textured red fabric with kind of like accents of like orange in the back. Um, and then we made our own pattern out of paper for this like cross over the top bikini thing. She kind of has that. It's simple, but it was challenging for me. <laughs> Uh, and uh, we kind of had to add like some string at the bottom so it bunched up here and had some pulling and then we just hand beaded over it. Um, and, and then this material is not leather. It's, it's like a covered, um, you know, it's like the stuff that, that in that ya in Yaya's collection of fabric that she does for Joanne's. It feels like a little like spandex, but you guys have painted it, I can feel. Yeah, it's, it's a fully stretch spandex and we just used a, um, not an airbrush, but a paint. Like a critter gun. It's yeah, called. critter it's gun. Great needle paint on it. And then this is leather with your hand stitching. Yep. But that is the kind of thing that you're not going to reproduce on on the machine. I mean, that's that's what it's that's what you need it to look like. And you know, your your hand embroidery here is really cool. It was fun. We were trying to get more into sewing. It's like the beading and the embroidery. It was really satisfying. It takes forever, but it's something you can just sit down, watch TV, and just right. work on. And it's quiet. Mm -hmm. You're not listening to a paint gun blaring or... <laughs> yeah, it's clean. Well, it's clean. <laughs> I, in my mind, paint guns blare. I mean, I don't know. They could be quiet, I suppose. They stink. They stink. <laughs> but there's, um, there's always attachments underneath and Velcro that it's so much easier to do that with a sewing machine. It's much more stable. Um, all of this was like done with the sewing machine and then, and then the detailing was done over it with hand stitching, so... It's, still, it's secure and it's made the proper way, but then you can kind of embellish it from there. It's always a good strong base with the sewing machine. And then as I step <laughs> over here, so th this is lovely. Wow, you looks like you've been through the ringer in this yeah. Okay. Yeah, this so. is one of our first big sewing things. This is um, Eileen the Crow from Bloodborne. It, it was the match for Amelia the Wolf. Ooh, so this is this. Yeah. <laughs> so she's like a, a creepy plague doctor huntress. And then this was a, a coat pattern that we modified. And then one of our favorite things to do was weather, <laughs> destroy it all. But <laughs> this is an example of the straps that we sewed. We learned how to make the belts and 
for all the Bloodborne stuff, we had it all hanging in the middle of this room and we had uh, those chip brushes and we trim them down so they're sharp and we just had a whole like piece of foil or something and we're just dipping paint, like acrylic paint and water and we're just flinging it all over it. So it was just a big blood. There's probably still blood and dirt. And dirt, yeah, there probably is dirt. <laughs> My laundry room looks like that because I did, I weathered a little sister oh, yeah, yeah. from uh, Bioshock. Mm -hmm. And I did it old school though. I actually buried my dress in the yard. <laughs> I think that's cool. And then dug it up and then dusted it off in the dryer and then took like weeks to clean the dryer. So I'm oh. not doing it right. <laughs> Use paint, put up a spray booth or something. Don't ruin your appliances doing your uh, your cosplay, but wow. That's and, cool. Yeah, you know, and I, it smells authentic. So yeah. it's not just a costume. <laughs> Um, so then we've got, we've got kind of like a work in progress set out, out here. And um, so this is, uh, I was talking to uh, Courtney and Dana earlier, and this is a um, shoulder piece, but it's only gonna go on one shoulder. So they won't cast this. They're probably gonna use the warbler, which is a bendable material that will smooth out some of those wrinkles. Not that you have wrinkles, you're very beautiful. Not yet, it needs, but, it needs a lot more crevasses. Okay, okay. It's a very early stage of the sculpture. Yeah. But yeah, so like I have a foam pauldron out of EVA foam, which is basically those mats you use to do yoga or whatever, um, kind of the same material. And uh, I just wedged in a bunch of foil so I can get the shape of where I'm gonna put the skull. So I have the size and everything and I can show you the pauldron in a second. Um, and then I just put that there and then slap some clay on and then we'll, we'll do the warbler treatment on there and then keep building up the detail. Oh, it's so amazing. And then this little guy, is this dry? Is this something? Yeah, sorry, you can touch it. We didn't make this bird. Oh, okay. She bought it off of okay. a really incredible artist called- um, Feral Works. Yeah, Feral Works. Okay. And so Dana painted it, um, and then she got these cool acrylic eyes that she's gonna paint. She's making an albino crow, and it's kind of just another way to kind of be artistic. It's fun to buy other people's pieces. Sometimes no, I mean, that's, up. you know, I, I have to say, it's like if I were gonna do a cosplay and I needed something, I would want to know how to make it, but yeah. I would go to somebody who so, yeah, sometimes it does nice. that, you it's know? It's nice to just um, do the part that's the most fun for you, and sometimes that's just the painting and the detail work. By the way, when you were in Switzerland, you might want to get this on camera because I'm about to tell a good story here. <laughs> All right, I get to take a bite. <clears throat> so when you were in Switzerland at Fantasy Basel, did you journey to the countryside at all? Yeah, a little bit. Did you go to the H.H. H. Geiger Museum? No. Oh, I God. have been there. It was the weirdest experience of my entire life. So for those of you at home, I can show some pictures from the vault. H.H. Uh, H. Geiger, he designed the art, the alien, the artwork for the movie Alien. And remember Sigourney Weaver and the alien coming at her? Well, there's lots of visuals in this museum <laughs> like that. In fact, they have a bar there. Yeah. And in the bar, it's the alien spine and uh. you sit in it and yeah. All right, it's happening now. We're gonna see the teeth. <laughs> So, I love it. Yeah, they fit my teeth pretty good. I can kind of talk to them. A little bit of a list. Yeah. But, like that. Or like the troll. I think it's the drool out of everything. Yeah, hopefully they're nice. So, this is for the troll cashew. I'm going to need tusks. These ones actually fit better. So, I can talk pretty good, you know. Do you wear other teeth on the top for the troll? No, because. Okay, we so just really wanted the tusks. Yeah, yeah. And I want to make it look as natural as possible. It you know, you really looks like you grew them, Dana. Oh, thanks. It's awesome. <laughs> but, um, so to start off making something like that, first we need to make molds of our teeth. And to do that, there is something called uh, dental alginate. I, alginate is made from algae. It's like this Hel creepy, rubbery, do they made this mint flavor because it goes in your mouth, but use alginate for other things. But it's totally non toxic, so it's super safe. Um, you just mix water with the powder, and then it becomes kind of like a goop that you put in your dental trays, and then you bite into it, and pretty quickly it'll, it'll settle up and 
and then you just pull it out and you kind of get something slightly similar to this. This is actually silicone, but it's kind of similar. Okay. Except with the LJ, it's a temporary because it's um it's just the water that's holding it together. So once it dries, it just falls apart and comes away. And so it's something you want to do for where you're going to put plaster in it immediately, and then um, then you'll have to plaster base, which I'll put some in there. So we mix plaster and pour it into the alginate and let it rest, then we can peel the alginate off and we get a rough draft of the teeth. Um, then we clean it up. And fill out some holes with some more plaster if there's any um, air bubbles that got in there. Yeah. We actually have a fancy set that we recast in resin so they're extra strong, which is nice if you're doing multiple casts so it doesn't break the... Do you make new molds of your teeth if you're making new kinds of tusks? Or or can you just kind of reuse that and then build, like if you needed to have like other kinds of teeth? Yeah, I don't, you know, teeth move. I don't think my teeth have moved enough that this is probably pretty okay. similar to what I got going on now. The way to make it interchangeable is, is in the, um, like the visine piece that we make out of plastic, and then that's what we use the vacuum form for. Okay. Uh, it's like I guess you've seen those like those like what white teeth whitener strips. Yeah. It's very similar to Invisalign. That. Yeah. Oh, Invisalign. That's strange. Okay. Yeah. So that's what it is like. And then we'll show you how to do that. But you make the plastic, and then you cut them out, and you get the base that snap on your teeth. Okay. And then then you start sculpting the creepy teeth on it. But oh, so you you sculpt the teeth on the. For I lack see. of a better word, don't sue me Invisalign, <laughs> but the Invisalign teeth. Okay. Yeah. And uh, they, we get our stuff from Monster Makers, but they make um, tooth polymer. It's like, you mix it with the chemicals together and it makes kind of like a slurry and you can put it in the mold or... It starts hardening very quickly. Um, so we've done it a couple ways. We've tried to kind of sculpt with it, but it's very... It's like very malleable and, and hard to work with, and then all of a sudden it starts to get really hard. So it's like a very small window to sculpt in. Um, but once it's hardened, you can drumble it away and you can rebuild it up. So okay. you can keep taking away and adding until you get something. And we kind of did that with these ones. Uh, we didn't actually make much of a mold for them. These were just hand sculpted with the with the polymer. Um, but for example, I think the tusks is the one that we did it with. And I don't know if we were using that. This is like the clay pieces. So these were sculpted on her um, plastic denture on top of her actual teeth molds. I didn't find backwards. And then um, with these on there, we used uh, a brush on mold. Or actually, no, we used um, a Tupperware and we filled it with silicone and then we pressed the teeth in. So we could recast those tusks now uh, without having to worry about trying to sculpt it. And I'm probably explaining this poorly. It's just a thing. Well, Julie. So um, what, what we would do is now that we have this mold is we'd fill the tusk holes with the, um, the polymer. Okay. And then we would take a fresh uh, plastic denture that had been vacuum foamed over and already trimmed. And that would just be stuck on these teeth. And so it would be like this without the tusks already on there. And then you'd press it into here and pull it out and then you would have a little rough cast of the polymer tusks and they would stick to the plastic. And then you could just kind of dremel it a little and then you could paint it and, and gloss it up. Okay. So there's a couple ways you can do it. And you ha already have a pretty good tutorial that I've watched on this and yeah. got the concept of, but it's good to see it here. Yeah, it's, it's a simple idea um, to make your own monster teeth, as many versions as you want. It's not very expensive once you have um, the vacuum form. And uh, and it's nice because they fit perfectly. It's, it's kind of similar to like, you know, the Halloween store uh, vampire teeth. Instead of using heating up the wax and pressing it in to make uh -huh. it fit, this is just um, a plastic version that's custom to your teeth. And then you also can control the coloring and everything. I I have only the finest vampire fangs that you can put in where you heat up the wax. Yeah. And at one time, they sort of matched my teeth, but now my teeth are... It's funny how they got whiter with age. I, <laughs> That's crazy. I, yeah. So um, this is a make you or Mac you back you form. Um, there are many versions or brands you can get. This one's nice and compact. It's perfect for the dental pieces we've been making. Um, you, you can buy their brand of plastic sheets. I believe they come in different thicknesses. 
Uh, I can't remember if this is too thick for this purpose, but it will still show us the vacuum forming. So um, you may, you know, for, for these purposes, for making like a dental piece, you probably want a really thin, thin one to kind of get all those nooks. You want it to really get into those teeth cracks so it fits tight. So we kind of plop it on here on the bottom tray, and I haven't done this in a while, so let's see if I can do it right the first time. Um, so now it's heating up, and we're going to let it stay up here, and after a few minutes, oh, I didn't like it, um, it'll start to droop underneath there. Okay, so now you plug your vacuum into the vacuum form, and it's heated up, and it's, now I will make sure it's turned on, I think, and... So it's I'll take it out. We popped it out. There you go. So then you've got this copy of your teeth. It fits right over the top. You can trim it down. Oh yeah. My, my friend, uh, Victor Amelia, over here, were those teeth done this way, or is that another way? Because obviously, your mouth is not nearly that good, so that's not really your teeth on this. But, yeah. but these little dudes here, because those do look very much like teeth, would those have just been other resin pieces that are painted? These are actually sculpted in a material called epoxy sculpt. It's a two-part epoxy. And you mix them together, and uh, it, it it will air dry eventually, and they're pretty sturdy. That and the gums are all sculpted with that, too. Okay. And then this is EVA foam. Okay. I love it. So, to, I, when I was reading about this costume, this, if you won some awards for, was it this one, or the troll? The troll, okay. He, Placed first in our category at BlizzCon. The Necromancer, we were a finalist for that at BlizzCon. BlizzCon was not. Oh, 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 yeah, both. Sorry. Yeah. That was like we were top 20 at TwitchCon, so we got to go out to uh, Long Beach for that. So we didn't win anything, but we were top 20. Mm -hmm. And then we took it to BlizzCon and got um, as a finalist for that one, too. But we always like BlizzCon. It's like our and where is BlizzCon? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not this year though. Yeah. <laughs> in in the normal world. Yeah. yeah. In Anaheim. Okay. And what time of year is that? Usually. The end of October, beginning of November. Okay. All right. So nice time if you're in Chicago to be at Anaheim. Yeah. 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 You go and it's getting cold here and you come back to snow. Oh. So whatever. Yeah. yeah. I think Reinhardt least best in this category at C2E2. Okay. Yeah. And Reinhardt is the robot. Yes. Okay. So if you want to put him on, we can put you in there if you want. That might be a good way to go out. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. So I just wanted to say that uh, I'm fulfilling my cosplay dream right now inside the robot. What What are we? What is his name? Reinhardt. Huh? Reinhardt. Reinhardt. <laughs> so, um, this thing is heavy. I've got to hold on to this thing. Oh my gosh. I wondered why there were all of these weights in, in this house. And now, now I know Courtney needs to like have some guns to hold on to this thing. So, but let's, uh, let's just say, I cannot believe how generous both of you are to invite us into your home and your workshop to film our humble little second episode of Talk So. So thank you so much, Courtney and Dana. You. I am still in awe of your talent. And uh, yeah, I let me just pose for an opportunity here because, you know, everyone's going to want to see this. <laughs> so, uh, in the meantime, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our Bernina of Naperville YouTube channel. It's easy. It's youtube.com slash Bernina of Naperville. And when you, if you want an alert to see more videos just like this one, don't forget to ring the little bell and 
Don't forget to keep watching Talk So With Us because we always have new guests each month. Next month, we have Philip Hulci from Laura Star, and that's gonna be interesting. I can't promise that there will be robots involved, but you know what, there's still hope. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Thanks everybody, see ya.